Hello, everybody. It is, oh, y'all, it is, I don't even know. It, what is it, Tuesday? Uh, it's gonna be July 21st, and I'm Ashley Fields with Yard Order Us. I'm so glad you guys are here. We are doing our Christmas in July. So tonight we're gonna actually be painting our Merry Christmas cane pole. I have the camera flipped around and I'm not quite used to that. So you might kind of see me trying to figure out which direction I need to be going in. Um, so here's, this is going to be our item that we're painting tonight. It's a pretty simple item. Um, so I, this is one that's already finished. So at the end, we'll actually glitter this one together. Uh, but here's my base coated one that I'm going to be working with. So whenever I got started, I did two coats of white was my base hello mom i started with two coats of white and then i went ahead and base coated my red and my green onto here and that's gonna be what we are starting with so that's what we're gonna make it look like but here is our beginning so i did already go ahead and get this windex because it has been sitting for a little bit so we all know windex is our friend so I did go ahead and get this Windex. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just get started on my shading. As you guys are hopping in, say hello. Let me know that you're there. And as always, if you have questions along the way, please, please, please ask. Uh, we only have one item tonight, so it's gonna be a little bit of a quicker uh, live. So any questions that come up along the way, go ahead and shoot them in the message and we will make sure that we get that answered for you. So, hey, Connie. Hey, Mom. So glad y'all are here. All right, y'all. So, this piece is pretty simple. I'm only going to have three shading colors. I'm going to shade my white that looks like the snow at the bottom and then the cuff on the hat. I'm going to shade my red and I'm going to shade my green. So, for me, I always start with whatever color is the lightest. So, in this case, it's going to be my white. And anytime I'm shading white for snow or that is going to be a Santa hat or anything like that, I'm gonna actually shade with beard blue. So, uh oh, looks like this one's an old one. It's kind of nasty. So I actually need to throw that, chunk it in the trash and make me a new one. So let me see. Do, 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 do. Of course, I don't have the little bottle of the beard blue. I gotta pull out my big bottle. So I hope everybody's doing good today. Um, I've kind of kept busy the last several days. So I'm kind of trying to uh, get caught up with my schedule because we are going out of town this weekend with some family and go glamping, camping with campers because <laughs> I don't do camping in tents. And so uh, I tried, I'm having to get caught up on some work and get it done kind of beforehand before we leave. So, hey, Debbie, I'm so glad you're here. Good to see you guys. Thank y'all for joining me. I'm starting with Beard Blue, number three. And I'm gonna use this on the white to do my snow and to do the hat for the Santa, the Santa's hat. Hey, Joy, I'm so glad you're able to join us tonight, honey. I am getting started with just shading this piece. Those of you that weren't here at the very beginning, I did start with my prime on here. I did two coats of white. And then after it was primed, I then came in and did um, my base coating of the red and the green. So this pattern's pretty simple. It doesn't have a whole lot of colors. Oop, oop, oop. Oh, there we go. I uh, have the camera flipped around and I'm not used to it. So I'm having to kind of play around with the uh, different angles. All right, so when it comes to the candy cane, I'm not shading the white on the candy cane. I want that stark white uh, as, as my contrast inside of that candy cane. So I actually leave the white alone inside of there. But I am gonna, let me just rotate this, make it a little easier. I am gonna go ahead and shade the snow at the bottom of my cane pole. Now, I don't have lines down here at the bottom that kind of show you, you know, where the snow might be. I honestly just kind of use my brush and create it in the kind of different kind of directions. I kind of created that swoop with my brush. Uh, you don't even have to do that. You could totally just do the perimeter. This is just, eh, I think it, it looks a little bit better that way. 
So uh, I did a couple of swish marks in the snow, but I did leave the cuff of the, ooh, the cuff of the hat plane. There's just not a whole lot of space down there. And the snow, I'm just trying to create it to make sure that it looks like snow. So just a couple of swish marks, not too much. As far as my white goes, I am done shading that. So let me clean my brush out. And we're gonna switch over. This one is a really fast pattern. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot to it. It's, it's, it's fairly easy. I think the thing that's the most time consuming is gonna be doing your words. And other than that, the rest of it is pretty quick. So let me cap that cup and grab our shading red. Now we're gonna do our, um, we're gonna shade our red and shading red number 23. Y'all, as always, I'm using the number 12 shader brush. Uh, that's just the size that I like. It's right in the middle, not too big, not too small. And I like it because I can use it the flat side and get it kind of thicker. Or I could use it straight and get a little bit of a thinner one. So I just like the versatility of a number 12. It's got a lot of different uh, leverage that you can use with it. So. Uh, I am on this schedule this Thursday for a live over polka dot stockings and solid stockings. And I also did the curse of believe. I wanted to let y'all know that I'm not actually going to be live. It is a pre-recorded video because we will be out of town. Um, our out of town plans were made after our calendar was made. So I hope you guys can forgive me, but I did already record that video for you and it's still gonna come out Thursday at 7 p.m. So as always, if there's any questions, feel free to ask them on that video and I'll come back and I can answer any of those questions for everybody. All right, so as far as my red goes, uh, shading, I'm done. Now I need to do my green shading, but I think before I do my green shading, I'm actually gonna come in with a script liner and go ahead and fill in these letters. Um, so that I am not dragging my arm through those, at, or dragging my arm through the shaded green after I get done doing that. So let me grab my brush out of the water. Like I said, I had already recorded that video for Thursday, so my water has some dirty brushes in it because I just recorded that like an hour or two ago. So I need to really wash my brushes. All right, let me see. I don't have, I don't know where I put my wipes. So let me just make another one. I'm gonna just get some white. Uh-oh, this paint has a booger in it. This is how I get so dirty, y'all. My hands, my clothes, everything. These bottles, some of them I've had for years, so they end up getting dried up paint in there. And then once I fill it up, that dried up paint will kind of rise up to the surface and get stuck in the spout. It kind of drives me nuts. So uh, I got a little bit of white paint because I'm trying to do letters and inside of these words, I want that water. I mean, I want that paint watered down some. Let me actually uh, stir it over here to the side because y'all all have seen me spill it all over my pieces. So, uh, thank you, Miss Debbie. Uh, my mom and a couple of her sisters are going to come and some of their kids, grandkids, that sort of thing. So, we're excited, but it looks like we're going to be playing in the rain this weekend, unfortunately. Uh, but like I said, the vacation was kind of pre-scheduled, so we, we never know what Mother Nature's going to do. We just have to make the best of it, you know? That's all we can do. So we leave Thursday morning, and I already told Zach, because we can check in at noon. I said, we're checking in at noon. That way we can make sure we can swim all day on Thursday because that seems to be the only decent weather day we might have this next or the next several days so hoping for the best but trying to make sure we prepare for the worst all right y'all all I'm doing is taking that white and I'm just filling in these letters um, I kind of follow that guide of the CNC on the inside of those lines. So I really back up and fill in those etched parts and then use those as my guide. Such a nice thing about the CNC machine is being able to have a groove because my paintbrush can fit into that groove and kind of follow it along those edges. 
just makes it so much nicer. We used to do patterns with um, carbon paper and we would have to trace it on back before the whole CNC thing uh, that we have now. And so, you know, it's in perspective for us and what the work used to be like, this, this is just the best. It's like we just died and went to heaven. I guess the best thing since last bread when it comes to yard art. So it makes it so much easier when it comes to painting stuff. Typically, I don't, I don't always do this, the filling in of letters on a live, because um, usually I'm trying to get through stuff and it's stuff that already takes a little bit of time. But this pattern's such a fast pattern. I just thought we would really just do it from start to finish together. I didn't have any backups like I usually have. I usually have one that's maybe already base coated and then I'll have one that's already shaded. Uh, but for this one, I didn't already base coat or shade any. I did have a finished one, but I didn't have anything for us to use in between because it's such a simple, easy thing. I figured I could also pull out our uh, blow dryer whenever we need it. Look, here I go, already wiping my arm into the wet part of the cuff. Typical, y'all. Those of you that have gotten some signs that have wording on it, how, how are y'all finding the letters to be? Do you like that the letters are there and engraved? Or some of you may be puttying over them and doing your own words with vinyl? Kind of curious, I haven't seen, I've seen a few of you guys' uh, patterns that do have words on them. It seems like a lot of the stuff that's been shared in the group doesn't really have words. I know words always add another dimension onto there of work too. Got some dog hair in my paint. I always have dog hair in my paint. So, oh, thank you, Pam. Pam says she loves the lettering. Did, uh, uh, Debbie asked, did Mary get Thursday too? Uh, no, uh, Mary's not coming on vacation till Friday. So Thursday, Zach and I are gonna leave and then Friday, everybody else is going to meet us there. So, uh, mom said she had too much work to do. She had to get caught up on some stuff. So, I actually, Zach gets up at like 5 o'clock in the morning. And typically, I sleep in uh, till at least 6.30. But today, I got up right when he did. And I was, I think I was outside by 5.30 or maybe, yeah, maybe I was making coffee at 5.30, but I don't know. It was, it was early. And um, he was like, why are you up so early? I, was, I got a lot of work to do. If we're going on vacation, I got to make sure I have all my stuff done. So I, um, tomorrow that video that is for our Thursday night live, since Thursday night, I'm going to be out of town. Um, I did pre-record that video and it's still going to come out to you guys Thursday at 7 p.m. So I did record that today. I just have to uh, get it uploaded tomorrow for that one to be pre-scheduled. It's so nice that we can actually pre-schedule when we're gonna post stuff. So I can schedule that, get it uploaded tomorrow and schedule it tomorrow and it'll come out at 7 p.m. on Thursday. So it's such a nice feature, y'all. As you're hopping in, anybody, if y'all have questions, please make sure you're asking them. At this moment, all I'm doing is filling in the letters on this. We already uh, shaded it, and right now I'm kind of trying to let some of that shading dry. And um, after I finish these letters, all I have to do is shade my green and then outline and highlight. And it's as simple as that. This pattern would be done. So this one's not too difficult. It's only got a couple of colors. And um, it's relatively quick in comparison to some of our other ones. So I hope you guys enjoy doing this. I don't know. I don't know if I've seen anybody paint this one yet. Uh, I don't believe I've seen any photos. Uh, but if you have, I'd love to see your photos of them. Here we go. Got another dog hair. Y'all always have dog hair in my paint. I don't know why. Well, maybe because my dogs live out here with me. They're wherever I'm at. 
I'm in the house, they're in the house. I'm outside, they're outside. So the dog hair follows me everywhere. Now on these letters, I'm honestly probably trying to be a little bit too picky and like really being careful to get up next to those lines. But don't feel like you have to be super exact. Um, by the time you get glitter on these, nobody's gonna see those etched lines underneath. So if you overstep that line or, you know, undercut that line, nobody's gonna know anything. So don't worry about it and do what works with you and your style and your paintbrush and your hand. Me, my paintbrush, I purposefully wear it out uh, because that's how I like it. So it's gonna give me kind of different strokes than your paintbrushes will give you guys. So mine fits really well into those etched lines, but yours might not yet because it's not broken in. So there we go. There's your words. Oh, Debbie says she's so proud of me turning my camera. I know, I know. But hey, in my my view, it's still the fun house. Like I look really long right now. It's kind of weird, but oh well. I'm hoping y'all see it kind of normal. My view looks a little more skewed from my angle. All right, y'all. Now I will come back to, with the white and the script liner at the end um, to do my highlights, but I'm going to actually put my script liner up or set it aside for right now because I do need to shade my green. The reason I did my lettering before I did the shading is because I didn't want to drag my arm across that green. You always want to work from the center out. Hey Joyce, Marcy, Victoria, I'm so glad you guys are here. All right, y'all, this one's a, a rather quick pattern. It, it really doesn't take too long. So uh, we started out with shading our white with the beard blue. And then we moved on to shading our red with uh, shading red number 23. And then uh, we went ahead and got our script liner to do our lettering for Merry Christmas. And then we just shaded our um, dark green number 12 on our green. And as simple as that, it's almost done. All I gotta do is outline it. Well, first I gotta make sure it's dry and uh, get out my hair dryer right quick. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and throw them in. Um, I did mention to everybody that I am going to be out of town on Thursday. I know a couple of you just hopped in. So I have a live scheduled Thursday, so my video will be posted. I've already recorded it, I just won't be live. So please forgive me. We have family vacation, so uh, we're gonna be leaving Thursday morning. But you guys will get to see glitter stockings, polka dot stockings, and the cursive believe on Thursday night. Oh, thank you, Victoria. I think we will. We're going to. Uh, Lost Lagoon in El Campo. It's just like an RV campsite place. And um, they have like a, a pool with a lazy river and they have like a inflatable obstacle course over their pond, like water. I don't, I'm, I'm not even sure how to explain it all. Uh, and they have an RC car track and Zach races RC cars. So it's like the perfect place to kind of get away for the weekend, but staying in one spot, not having to go all over the place. So we're excited. All right, I think that'll be good enough for our purposes. Now, um, anybody who watched our live, or my live with Ribbon Santa, you've kind of heard a little bit of this already. Whenever we do outlining, sorry, this is weird with this camera angle. Uh, whenever we do outlining on anything that's white that you shade with beard blue, we're gonna outline with navy blue. That navy blue is gonna help it to pop. Black would really take away from those, those color tones that we're kind of going for. So you can see here that I used uh, beard blue, navy blue, and then on the red and the white, I actually outlined that with black. Uh, but that is a difference. So these, this piece is going to have two different outline colors. We're going to do navy blue number six and black number 37. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with my navy blue. Looks 
like I might need a little more. Mine's kind of getting low over here. So I'm going to outline with the, the navy blue first, and then I'll switch over and outline with black and then throw a couple highlights on here. And this pattern's done. It's pretty simple. Um, I think that's why I like this one so much. I'll actually have to post a picture in here of um, something else that I ended up doing based off this pattern. I made some of these cane poles that are about four feet tall with the same sign that says Merry Christmas and Santa stop here, but they're big and it's a two piece that I'll we'll attach together that I'm gonna be um, selling this year for painted pieces. And it looks really, really cute. I just love it. So it's so fun seeing something, seeing a pattern and then being able to also turn that into the same pattern into a totally different look. So this one kind of inspired me on that. Y'all, I'm using my uh, script liner number four, my Royal script liner. The same one that we have in stock at the store. I feel like sometimes because we've been, I feel like we've been together doing this for a while that I almost forget to tell y'all because I do use the same brushes every time. So I want to make sure I'm letting y'all know uh, which ones I am using. The only thing y'all have seen me use is this same exact script liner and then my shader number 12. And those are the only two brushes that I've used tonight and the only ones I will use tonight. So there's that outline on my hat. I will outline that red and black. Uh, I'm just gonna wait till I finish, finish this right quick. You know, whenever you're using this beard blue, whenever you come to outline a beard blue, you're wanting to stay in that blue family. And that blue that we use here for our snow or the cuff on a hat, or Santa's suit or anything like that. It's really to offer a pop and a contrast between the layers of that piece. And once you get done with this and you do all the different colors that I'm showing you to do, you guys will see a totally different dimension than if you were to just do the entire thing outlined in black. So there's the outline so far on white. Now, uh, I know some of you guys hopped in recently. As far as it comes on my candy cane pole, I'm not shading that. That, I want it to stay stark white to give me the candy cane look and feel. So I'm not putting any shading on that at all whatsoever. Um, you're welcome to. Victoria has showed some really great shading with some gray. Um, so that could always be a possibility. For me, I've always just left it blank. So for, I, I'm a creature of habit. I like to do what I've always done, so. Uh, I stick with what I know. Hey, Sandy, I'm so glad you hopped in. Hi, Ann. Is this your first time joining us on a live? If so, welcome. We're so glad you're here. I am just teaching on how to uh, paint this Merry Christmas cane pole right now. We just got done outlining our, our white. We out actually shaded it with a beard blue and then outlined it with navy blue. And now we're going to outline the red and the green and black. So... Uh, this script liner I'm using as a number four again, but uh, my black, this is our number 37 paint, uh, black paint, and I like to add a little bit of water to mine. For me, it's the glide of the brush. Uh, adding a little bit of water helps my brush to glide a little bit further. Now, everybody's brush is different. It really depends on the age of your brush or how much you might have it worn in. I know I've told y'all guys, I purposefully kind of wear my brushes out because I then get the brush strokes that I want from them. So once my bristles are more worn out, then I notice I require more water. The newer my brush is, the less water I require, or my brush is gonna require to glide. So that's really just something I think is, um, everybody will find it to work differently for them based on their brush that you're using or the paint that you're using, or maybe your painting style too. If you're somebody who takes really short strokes, then you don't, you don't need to uh, worry about adding water. But I try to do long strokes if possible. It's not always possible. So, let's see. Uh, Ann says, do you sell the paints? Yes, we sure do. Uh, our website is Yard Art R Us, kind of like Toys R Us, but Yard Art yardartrs.com and we have all of our blanks and paints there 
So when we have our lives and we, we speak in the numbers that we've given every paint, every paint for us has its own number. So we have 38 different numbers. And when we're using our paints, we let you guys know what number it is that we're using so that uh, you guys can follow along at home. Now this black I'm buttoning right up to that navy blue and kind of filling in those lines. I'm really following along with those CNC etch lines. Now as far as my outline goes, this one's done. It's a very, very, very simple pattern. How cute is that, y'all? All I gotta do is add a little bit of white highlights and then this will be done. Uh, let's see. We do not have any of the cups. I'm not sure what the cups are. Uh, I'll have to get online tonight. I'll be by. Oh, and thank you so much. I think I think we're just. I'm just seeing uh, other people trying to help answer questions for you. All right. Thank y'all so much for helping. All right. Now I'm going to move on to highlighting because, as we all know, no yard art piece is ever finished without highlights. You've got to have some highlights. So. I'm gonna go back to the same script liner in a little bit of white. This white already has a little bit of water added to it. And I am just gonna add a little bit onto here. And this is gonna be that thing that really kind of starts to bring it to life. When I'm doing this, I'm kind of up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down with my brush. And I try to also let my brush take me. Well, I was about to flip it around to uh, highlight the bottom, but as y'all can see, the bottom's already white, so I don't even need to highlight it. Y'all, simple as that. There is your Merry Christmas cane pole. How cute is that? So easy, so easy, so simple. So I do have one that is already dry that we will poly together. I know you guys have liked being able to see the polying and the glittering over and over. I've also had a lot of questions about polying come through. Um, I had somebody ask, why did their poly turn yellow? That they polyed a piece and the poly turned yellow. And my response to that was you might've had a pool of poly stuck there. And so if you have a thickness of poly sitting somewhere on your piece and it lays there and it dries, it can dry yellow. So I'm always gonna recommend to you guys, always, 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 always to use a roller when you poly. Um, a roller will give you the same consistency across your whole piece and it'll also make sure that you don't have pools of poly sitting on top of your piece that can uh, run the risk of turning yellow. I hate to see the yellowing because we all know after all the work you put into your piece, the last thing you wanna do is do your last finishing touch and it ruins it. So I hope you guys will consider using a roller when you poly. Uh, I think everybody's caught up on questions. Y'all, I didn't grab my roller. Uh, forgive me, let me go grab one right quick. Okay, so this one's been dry. I actually painted this, I don't know, probably a month ago. Uh, so it's definitely dry. Um, and I did go ahead and Windex it since I did paint it a month ago because we always want to make sure it's Windex. That way it's clean and it's ready to uh, soak in what I'm about to put on here and it's not going to go, you know, fly out being all crazy. So there is my roller already loaded with poly. There is my polyurethane. I always like to load up my roller and then proceed to taking it around the piece. So I like it. I, I've said the same thing and I'm gonna continue saying the same thing. I want you to think of it like a glazed donut. You want that glaze to be even and consistent all over that entire piece. Um, a little trick is to always check your edges. If something's not gonna get poly on it, it's gonna be the edges. So always check your edges. And even after I've rolled over the piece and I know the whole thing's wet, I sometimes take my roller and just roll right back over the top of it just to make sure that I have the same consistency of poly across the whole thing. So it's never a bad idea to double and triple check yourself. Um, go slow with poly, take your time. Um, and rollers are gonna be best for one, when it is a painted piece. If this was a fully glittered piece, you're gonna wanna spray poly. That would come out a lot easier. Uh, let me finish this and I'll explain a little bit further. 
So once you have your glazed donut with your polyurethane, it's all even, you have no pools of poly. Then you could come in and go ahead and sprinkle your glitter. Same analogy I've used with the poly is the, you know, glazing a donut. With, now with the glitter, I want you to think of it like seasoning meat, seasoning a steak, seasoning chicken breast, whatever. You're putting your seasoning on there and you want it to be consistent. You want every bite to taste the same. So take your time and go slow and make sure that every little part of your piece has the same amount of glitter. Now, I had the question last week as well. What happens when I put too much glitter? My, I, I polyed my piece, I glittered it, and when it dried, it was too much, okay? That's okay. What you have to do before putting your final coat of poly is, for instance, if I got too much glitter on this, I'm gonna let it dry, and then once it dries, I'm gonna take my hand and slosh off all that excess glitter that I can. You can do that in between your first coat of poly and your second coat, but if you've already put your second coat of poly on there, unfortunately that glitter's stuck and it's gonna stay. But if you've done your first coat of poly and you put too much glitter, no worries, let it dry, slosh it off, and then once you have the consistency across your entire piece, then do your second coat of poly and let it be done. So we also only, usually only use poly on the face and we don't put it on the sides. If you wanna put it on the sides, you can. I guess it could be extra um, protection for your piece, but we don't do that. So the edges are really sealed with a couple of coats of paint for us. So if you notice all of my edges, they're all painted with the color that I have on top. So we don't leave um, any edges. All of our edges are sealed with paint. So, uh, as far as our Merry Christmas cane pole goes, that's, it's as simple as that. My piece is finished. Only thing I have to do is tomorrow after it dries, I'll do one more coat of poly so that way that glitter in between will stick and it'll adhere to that piece. I don't have to worry about it coming off. Now on Thursday, um, I, like I said, it's supposed to have a live, but I had to do it pre-recorded because of going out of town. So Thursday at 7 p.m., you'll get to see me painting the polka dot stockings, these two as well as a uh, glittered stocking, and then the Cursive Believe, which is actually outside on my easels right now. I don't even have it in here. Uh, but those pieces you'll see on Thursday night at 7 p.m. The video will be, will be posted in our Painters Club. So I know this video was a little bit quick tonight. It was, I only had one piece and it was pretty simple. And y'all, I'm just dripping sweat. Ugh, so sorry. But I also wanna let y'all know, <coughs> We, um, had to, we usually have sneak, peek on, sneak peeks every month on Monday, the very first Monday of the month, and we release all the patterns for the month. But for August, it's gonna be a little different. I, I set up a poll in the group and asked you, or let y'all guys know that we had some scheduling conflicts and we had to move the date. And it looks like the most of you are wanting J Friday, July 31st at 7 p.m. So we will have our sneak peek for August, September, um, on July 31st at 7 p.m. All of the patterns that we're releasing for August are fall, Halloween, and Thanksgiving related. Now, we are going to take August and September to teach all of those patterns. So it'll go a little bit slower because this is, we've had a ton of lives this month, y'all. I think it's like over 20, uh, you know, like four or five days a week having lives. So we're gonna take it a little bit slower next month and kind of space ourselves out for August and September. So everything released next month, we're gonna take two months to teach you guys. So uh, also, let me show you guys a little sneak peek of one of our, our patterns that we will have. This one will be coming out in August. So here is your sneak peek to your sneak peek because I know you guys love to see uh, what we're working on. We're always working on stuff behind the scenes. So uh, this will be one that you'll see Friday, July 31st at 7 p.m. that'll be released in August. Uh, I believe that template came from door badges if I am not incorrect, I believe. Uh, so there you go, that is our night. Thank y'all so much for joining me. Um, these photos are already uploaded online so you guys can see them. And don't forget to check out uh, Thursday night, 7 p.m. The video will be uploaded of me painting our uh, stockings in our believe, but I will just actually be out of town. So make sure you leave your questions and comments on there and I will make sure I can answer those for you guys. 
So thank y'all so much for being here. I will see you guys uh, virtually on Thursday from afar. And then um, I'm live next, I think Monday, Wednesday, and Friday next week. So I'll see y'all soon. Thank y'all so much. Bye guys.